I want to tell you something, that God is doing a new thing in this place this morning. Happy New Year because God wants to do some new things in your life. God wants to give you new direction. God wants to give you new realizations that He is in the midst of everything that you're doing. And He's never going to give up on you. God is going to find you if you just turn your face towards Him in the slightest. He'll never give up on you. He'll find you. He'll pick you up. And it's going to be the greatest thing. I declare it right now. It's going to be the best year of your life. How many of you want the best year of your life? I want the best year of my life. I want you to have the best year of your life. I want SC Church to have the best year that we have ever had. And I proclaim it today. How many of you are ready for the word of the year? Today we get the word of the year. And this is one of my favorite Sundays of the year because we come with expectation. We come with great excitement. We come ready to agree going in one direction what God has given. Last year, 2022, what was our theme? Love God well. Let me tell you, that statement, that's not going anywhere. That's a cultural statement forever. Foundational in everything we do. We're going to love God well the rest of our lives. Can I get an amen? amen? But this year, this is 2023. This is our Michael Jordan year. Come on, somebody. What happened when Michael Jordan had the ball? He made some baskets and he won a bunch of games and there was a lot of glory. So I'm going to ask our parishioners and our board, but I think we're going to sell Michael Jordan jerseys out in the front four year. Will it? I don't Maybe I lost it. Go ahead and take it, Sarah. You can take it from me. I love to study the biblical significance of numbers. I don't know if anyone is with me, but when we have a new birthday, an anniversary, especially a new year, it's so much fun to study the biblical significance and meaning of that number. And I know maybe people can get carried away with that, but to be honest with you, this year I totally have. Because we have had so much fun studying, preparing for the word of the year this year. You know, when we want a prophecy, when we're seeking a prophetic word, we're really seeking a word from the Holy Spirit. And so there's no better place to turn than to what the Spirit wrote, the scriptures. The purest form of prophecy is what's been written in the word of God, amen? And God is a God of numbers. So as we look to receive, we're gonna find what God has to say right there in the scriptures. And so we've been studying 23, and we decided to research the 23rd chapters of every book of the Bible. And there's actually only about 17 books of the Bible that have a 23rd chapter, so it's doable. In fact, I just want to throw this out there. We're beginning 21 days of prayer and fasting. Just maybe you might want to read and study the 23rd chapters of the Bible, too. Let me tell you, it's worth your time. And so that's what we've done, and it has been so exciting. And as we studied, really some clear prophetic themes emerged. We're not going to take you through every single one of the 17 books that have a 23rd chapter, but we're going to look at a bunch of these chapters to show you what God wants to say this morning. How many of you are ready for God's Word? Come on, how many of you are ready for God's direction? Well, turn with me and get your Bibles right now, Ezekiel 12 and 25. It's on our app as well. You can download this. But this is what the Bible says. It says, for I... And the Lord, I will speak the word that I will speak, and it will be performed. It will no longer be delayed, but in your days, O rebellious house, I will speak the word and perform it, declares the Lord. And everybody said, amen. amen. Friends, I'm going to make you wait a little longer for the word of the year. I'm not going to give it to you quite yet. We're going to give it at the end of our sermon, but the title of this message is When God Arises. I'm about to pray and we can be seated. When God Arises. Let me tell you, this year God is going to arise. And when God arises, what happens? Well, for some, it's glorious. For some, it's fearsome. But I want to tell you, this year the best is yet to come for your life. Bow your heads. Hey, let's pray together. God, we love you. 
Lord, we bless this word that you've given to us. Wash over this place. We invite your Holy Spirit to fill us. We invite your Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us. Take these words and change us in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, hey, give two people a high five and you can be seated. All right, community church, it's our favorite part. I love a new year. I always love the turning of the page of the calendar, a new season, a clean slate, a fresh start. I love a brand new year every single time. Um, as we began to study and pray and get ready for our word of the year, I was just getting fired up. And I'm thinking, yes, this is a great year, new year, new me, the old is gone, the new is here. And so I'm like, let's get started. Let's start in Genesis 23. So I turn to Genesis 23, and this is the title of the chapter, The Death of Sarah. <laughs> right there. It's right there. You can see it. And I'm like... Well, great, what does that mean, you know? Here we are off to a really great start. It makes me think of a meme someone sent me not too long ago, and I think it says something like, starting the new year off like dot, dot, dot. And it's this video of this grade side service, and they're about to do a ceremonial releasing of the dove. And the minister's holding the dove, and he's praying, and he says amen, and he releases the dove, and it's a special moment, and the dove just goes, and the whole crowd's like, and someone says, that one dead. It's kind of like that, okay? Great start, the death of Sarah. Okay, God, you have my attention. Yeah, yeah. So the Bible says that Sarah dies, and Abraham is mourning and weeping at her bedside. So we have mourning and weeping. I wonder how many of us in here in 2023 experienced mourning and weeping. Wow. But... In Genesis 23, 3, it says this. Then Abraham rose from beside his dead wife and spoke to the Hittites. He said, I am a foreigner and a stranger among you. Sell me some property for a burial site here so I can bury my dead. So Abraham experiences loss. He's grieving at the bedside of Sarah. But then the Bible says that Abraham rose up. Everyone say that with me. Abraham rose up. And then he takes his next step, which would become one of the most significant next steps of his entire life journey. Notice he says, I'm a foreigner and stranger among you. They are in the land of Canaan when this happens. This is the land that God promised to Abraham. This is the promised land, but Abraham has no ownership, no legal right to the land up to this point. But because Sarah passes away in that moment and time, Abraham then purchases land for her burial and in so doing puts his stake in the ground of the promised land. Because of that moment, he now has secured the footing for his future. And although there is death, that death produced a significant page being turned in the plan of God. I love that so much. So Sarah, she became like a seed placed in the ground that ultimately produced a great harvest just like God promised the nation of Israel. What is that? They'll be as numerous as the stars. So if you're taking notes today or if you're downloading our notes on our app, our first point is this. When God arises, transition happens. The plan of God is always turning a page. There is a theme of transition throughout the 23rd chapters of the Bible, and I, I just love it. And transition always involves the death of something. So here's just a few of the 23rd chapters. In Joshua 23, we see Joshua's farewell address to the children of Israel, his final words to the nation of Israel. In 2 Samuel 23, we see King David's final words, his final address. In 1 Chronicles 23, 
David makes Solomon king. So they pass the kingship from David to Solomon. There's always a transition in these 23rd chapters. And we see the old passing to make way for the new, like the wineskin Pastor Brian talked about last week. How many of you enjoyed Pastor Brian's message last week? Can we put our hands together for Pastor Brian's message? Man, that was great. Well, what did he talk about? He talked about that it's time for some transitions to take place. And transition always involves the death of something. Laying down the old for the fulfillment of the promise is really how God always works. And the longer you live, the more you know this to be true. What did Jesus say? Let's go to the words of Jesus. Jesus said in John 12, 24, I tell you the truth, unless a kernel of wheat is planted in the soil and dies, it remains alone. But its death will produce many kernels, a plentiful harvest of new lives. Friends, 2023 is a year of transition. Examine your own heart. And I want to ask you this question. And I want you to get real with yourself. What needs to be laid to rest in our lives this year? What needs to be laid to rest during these 21 days of prayer and fasting in your life? What needs to die so that God can really live the way he needs to live? For me, I'm going to, I'm gonna spend more time with Jesus than I normally do every single day during these 21 days. What is that? Taking a step towards God. I'm, I'm showing up to every single one of these Wednesday night services and the Saturday morning, the last Saturday. What am I giving up? Some things that need to die in my life. Pray for me, because I'm giving up sugar, oh dear Lord, it's going to be tough. And I'm giving up Netflix and movies, oh God. Now that I've said it out loud, now I have to keep myself to it, right? Like I just, I can't not do it, I have to do it. So what is it in your life that you need to give up? Maybe you need to give up social media. Maybe you need to stop going to that place that's making you struggle and you're not having a good time and getting close to Almighty God. Maybe you need to give up that anger that always arises. Maybe give up that lust for 21 days. Whatever it is, kill that thing in your life that's keeping you from having all that God wants you to have in your life. You gotta kill it. What what does that mean? Well, I wanna speak prophetically over you in your life. How many of you wanna accept a prophetic statement over you? Right now, if you wanna accept this, just lift your hands and accept it. It's time to rise up. Everyone say, rise up. up. It's time to rise up out of your place of mourning, from your place of immobility, from the place where you have been stuck, stuck in grief, stuck in sin, stuck in addiction, stuck in negativity, and rise up. It's time for some things that have been dead in your life to rise up and to awaken, for you to go to the next area that God wants you to do. God wants you to live, but not just live, God wants you to rise up in his presence. If you claim that today, give God some praise in this place. We're going to rise up. God's going to give it to us. That's what we're doing this year. Come on. God is so good. Mm. All right. As you study the 23rd chapters of the Bible, there's another significant theme that emerges, and you cannot ignore it. More than a third of these chapters have to do with this judgment. When God arises, judgment takes place. In the Bible, where it seemed like God was passive and inactive towards sin, where it seemed like people were getting away with rebelling against God, suddenly in the 23rd chapter, we see God respond swiftly and mightily. Let's look at some of these chapters. Actually, before we begin to see judgment, we first see blessing. That's God's original plan. He always begins there. When we turn to Exodus 23, God is pronouncing his blessing over Israel. Then in Leviticus 23, God prescribes the way of life that protects his blessing over Israel. But by the time we get to 2 Kings 23, Israel had been in rebellion against God for generations. And it seemed like, what is God going to do about it? 
They did not know God. They didn't know his house. They didn't know his word, his law. They were so far removed from God. And so finally in 2 Kings 23, God responds. And we see two things, judgment and restoration. See, when God arises, it's two sides of the same coin. There's judgment and restoration. In fact, it's the judgment that makes way for restoration to happen. And in order for God to restore his people in 2 Kings 23, there had to be some death to some things. I love that in the story, by this time, Israel had gotten so far from God and for so long that no one even knew the law of God anymore. They, they didn't even know the words of God. What does that mean? Well, in the very temple of God, they began making sacrifices to Baal. That's false gods, idols. And in this day and age, they couldn't tell the difference between an idol worshiper and someone that served the one true God. Let me tell you, there's a problem if someone can't tell a difference between you and the world. They've got to know that you serve Jesus. And in this day, they didn't know that they served Almighty God. So what happened? Well, they lived in sin, and Israel was cursed until they finally got a godly leader. Josiah becomes this leader, and he's a God-fearing king. Josiah says, what we're going to do is we're going to take the temple, and we're going to clean the temple up. We're going to clean it out, and this is the place for Almighty God. And as they begin cleaning the temple, they find an old book, And they dust off the dust. And they say, look at this book. And if they knew anything, they wouldn't say this is just a book. They'd say this is the book. This is the key to everything. What did he do? Josiah, he gathers people. And the number 23 all throughout the Bible, you can also say it has a theme of gathering. God's children gathering together. So Josiah the king gathers People from the north, from the south, from the east, from the west, they came back home to the temple. And I just want to prophesy right now over our house. I believe that in 2023, people will come to SC Church from the north, from the south, from the east to the west. People will come home that haven't been home in a very long time in the name of Jesus. So what happened? They gathered together. They take this book. They didn't even know what the book was. And he opened it. And in front of everybody, Josiah reads the words of God. And get this, in one day, the covenant was restored to Israel. The covenant was restored to God's people. I want to tell you this. No matter how far you've been, no matter what you've done, no matter how hopeless it feels, in one day when you turn your face to Almighty God, He will restore you and He will make you brand new. And that's what God's people did. But... After Josiah, they still had a choice. Everyone say, I have a choice. choice. There's still the choice. So a new king comes, and and it's in 2 Kings 23. This new king, his name is Jehoahaz. And Jehoahaz, he becomes king, and he chooses wrong. He chooses idols once more. And choosing wrong, guess how long he was king? Just three months. Why? Why? Because he chose not to go in the direction of Almighty God. I want to tell you this. Choose God's way. It's not the best way. Everyone say, it's the only way. way. Yes. As we continue looking at the 23rd chapters, we continue seeing this theme of judgment. Isaiah 23, we see judgment. Jeremiah 23, 1 says, Woe to the shepherds who are destroying and scattering the sheep of my pasture, declares the Lord. Ezekiel 23, we see judgment. We get to Matthew 23, and Jesus rebukes the the, the religious leaders of his day, the Pharisees. And they had gotten away for generations with corruption and wickedness. But here in Matthew 23, suddenly we see the anger of God manifested through Jesus Christ. And he delivers the seven woes of the Pharisees. And he calls them hypocrites, brood of vipers, snakes, blind guides. He's angry. See, it seemed like they were getting away with it 
for so long. But in that 23rd chapter, we see God moving, speaking in response, settling some things. And I think it's important for us to notice that this judgment is always to do with the people of God with the family and the house of God. Josiah, um, God used him to bring judgment to the house and the family of God. Jesus is speaking to religious leaders of his people. Jeremiah, he says, woe to the shepherds. And, and First Peter teaches us that judgment always begins with the house of God first. But remember, it's judgment and restoration. That's that two sides of the same coin. There's death and resurrection. There's closing and an opening. There's a laying down so that we can take up what is new that God has for us. In Jeremiah 23, it doesn't just pronounce judgment. It continues to promise restoration. Listen to this. This is the Lord speaking, Jeremiah 23, 5. I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries where I've driven them and will bring them back to their pasture where they will be fruitful and increase in number. And listen to uh, Jeremiah 23, verse 6. I will raise up for David a righteous branch. His name shall be called the Lord, our righteous Savior. Notice that prophetic promise of God arising in chapter 23. I will raise up a righteous Savior. Come on. When God arises, he arises to restore his people to restore you. He arises to restore his name, his glory, his house. And that's what we are going to see. And that's part of him gathering from the north, the south, the east, and the west. And this year is going to be a year of finality, of God settling accounts, where what has been delayed, postponed, held back, will now happen and swiftly by the hand of God. Thank you, Jesus. This year, there is transition happening, which is great. But that also means that some things must be laid to rest. Yes, this year is a year of restoration. How many of you want to claim that in your life, a year of restoration? You want God to restore some things, and that's wonderful. That also means that's going to be a time of judgment and sifting of the wheat among God's people. Acts 17.30 says it this way. In the past, God overlooked such ignorance But now he commands all people everywhere to repent. The idea of judgment, I mean, that word's kind of scary. Would y'all agree with me? Judgment's kind of a little scary, but I want to reframe it for you right now. And it's in the last 23rd chapter we'll cover this morning. It's in Luke 23. What happens in Luke 23? Well, Jesus is crucified and Jesus is buried. And just like Sarah that we talked about a moment ago, Jesus became the seed in the ground that produced a wonderful harvest. He took upon himself the judgment of God that was meant for all of us so that we wouldn't have to bear it. The Bible says this, and I love this so much, Isaiah 53, 5. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his stripes... By his wounds, we are healed. I need to get an amen. Amen. Second Chronicles 5.21 says this, For God made Christ, who never sinned, to be the offering for our sin, so that we could be made right with God through Christ. I want to tell you this morning that Jesus paid it all. Did you hear me? I said Jesus paid it all. Glory be to God for anything good that happens in any of our lives. And yes, there will be judgment. Yes, we will walk through things. Yes, we're going to have to make some things die in our lives. And we want the greatest life with Jesus. But his love, his grace, the excitement, and the joy is evermore. I want us to have a little joy after this verse because this is one of my favorite verses this morning. Psalm 68, 1 through 3. This is what it says. It says, let God arise, let his enemies be scattered, but let the righteous be glad. Yes, let them rejoice exceedingly. Come on, let's rejoice this morning. God's going to arise and your enemies are going to be scattered. Come on, give God some praise like you mean it. Come on, let's give God praise right now. Thank you, Jesus. 
In the 23rd chapters of the Bible, we see God arising. And we believe in 2023, we're convinced, we're going to see God arise. Come on, do you want to see God arise in 2023? Do you believe we can see a manifestation of God like never before this year? I believe we are going to see that. And if we haven't given you enough already, get this. Guess how many times scripture talks about God arising? 23. That's just crazy, right? Come on. God is speaking so loud and clear over us this year. When God arises, his enemies scatter, but his people rejoice. Which leads us to our final and best part of our message. Are you ready to receive the word of the year? Come on, awesome, awesome. We're about to get to it just in a second, but I want to give you our third and final point first, and that is this, when God arises, his people arise and shine. Come on, when God arises, his people arise and shine. Okay, now listen, as we prepared for this message, it has not come easy. And we've been in spiritual warfare, to be honest. And I spent the better part of the last couple of months at home battling in my health. And during that time, Lacey, one of my dearest friends in the world, our youth pastor, uh, director of SC College, her and Josh, aren't they amazing? Yes, come on. She also sent me that meme about the birds, so you can thank her for that one. Give me credit. Okay. Um, <clears throat> back to, back to the message. Where was I? Okay. So during this, I feel like this also speaks to how important it is for us to gather together because we need each other more than ever yeah. during this time. And as I'm in a tough place, place getting discouraged, I get a word of prophecy from my friend. And, and that is exactly what we need from one another, a timely word, Right. And and she says, you're going to be home alone, seeking God, and then the presence of God is going to sweep over you, and you're going to receive the word of the year. Let me tell you, not making this up, that is exactly what happened. I'm at home, and I, this is what happens. I open my Bible to Isaiah 60, and as I read, I begin to sense the presence of God just wash over me. For the first time in a while. And I knew God was speaking prophetically over me, over us. I immediately call Denny in the room and I read this to him and it just confirms in his heart that, that this is the word that God is speaking over us this year. We prayed together. It confirmed all the conversations we had had leading up to that point over the past several weeks. We knew God just spoke yeah. and God just gave us the word of the year. Yeah. And so would you all stand over all over this place? This is a solemn moment. As we receive the word of God prophetically, how many of you hunger for a prophetic word? And it's so amazing that God speaks corporately and yet specifically, precisely, exactly what you need. And I believe that is what this is. And so I want to read the passage to us, the same exact passage I was reading that day that we received the word. And I want you to listen as if God is speaking specifically, prophetically over you. Isaiah 60, starting in verse 1. Arise, shine. For your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look about you. All assemble and come to you. Your sons come from afar and your daughters are carried on the hip. Then you will look and be radiant. Your heart will throb and swell with joy. The wealth on the seas will be brought to you. To you the riches of the nations will come. The sun will no more be your light by day, nor will the brightness of the moon shine on you. For the Lord will be your everlasting light, and your God will be your glory. I am the Lord. In its time, I will do this swiftly. Verse 1, once again. 
Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. I can hear God saying this. The last year in 2022, you decided to do something for me and loving me well. In 2023, I'm deciding to do something for you. It's time to arise and shine. The word for 2023, come on, Sarah, is arise and shine. Come on, say it with me. Arise and shine. Imprint it on your spirit. Say it again. Arise and shine. Claim it for your life. One more time. Arise and shine. Come on, give God some praise in this place. Come on, we can do better than that. Give God some praise. Arise and shine. That's the word of the year. Thank you, Lord. When God says to arise, it means to rise up from the ashes and to move into action and to exert power. When God says shine, it means to radiate light, the light of Christ, and to bring forth life. When the Lord tells you to arise, He wants you to get up from the lowly position the enemy has placed us in, which has caused us to be depressed and to lose hope, to shake off the spirit of lack of infirmity, those things that have been dogging our steps, and step forward like Abraham did, and to claim the promise that God has for us. We're a city on a hill. We're planted, and we're the salt of the world. Let me tell you, we're going to do what God has called us to do. Come on, Sarah. Take us home. Mm, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Arise and shine is both a command and a promise. There are three recorded instances where Jesus raised someone up from the dead. And one of those is when he raised a little girl, Jairus' daughter, from the dead. And when he raised her up, he didn't suggest for her to arise. He, he didn't just encourage or ask her to arise. He commanded her. And in Aramaic, he said, Tali takum which means, little girl, I say to you, arise. And that is what he's saying over us today. He's commanding over our lives. Tali takum, I say to you, arise. And that is why it's not just a command, it's a promise, because when God tells you to arise, you will arise. Listen to this. This is another key verse for this year, Numbers 23, 19. God is not human that he should lie, not a human being that he should change his mind. Does he speak and not act? Woo, I feel like he's saying this so loud and clear. Does he promise and not fulfill? There's so many things we gave up on in the waiting period. And God is saying, I spoke that. I will fulfill it. Who do you think I am? And God is declaring a command and a promise. Rise up. Arise. This is your year, and God is going to make it happen. Arise and shine, for your light has come. What is, what is our light? Our light is that we exalt Jesus. Jesus is our light. This is my last verse, and then we're going to respond to this. We're going to bless this word of the year. This verse is so good. It's John 8 and 12. It says, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. We can arise and shine, friends. Why? Because he rose first. We can get up and do what we do, not because of our own strength, because of the strength of Almighty God. Today, I want us to respond. We have been anticipating. We wanted to build the anticipation up. Why? Because now that we have the word, it's not waiting. It's time to go. It's time to step forward together in agreement. So we're going to respond physically and spiritually right now. We accept it. How many of you accept this word, arise and shine for your life? I claim it over you and everything that you do. 
And if you claim it, I want you to get out of your seat and come to the front right now. We're going to claim it together. We're going to pray together. We're going to bless this together. We're going to do this in one accord, in agreement. The power of agreement is this. Just this room in agreement. Friends, we could transform this city. We could transform this entire state. Just this room in great agreement. And I think that it's monumental that today is the first day, day one, of 21 days of prayer and fasting. Day one. So on day one, this is our prayer. We're about to pray a prayer of agreement that God will allow you to arise and shine. I just want to encourage you to get that booklet that's in the front. It says pray first. Give something more to God all throughout these 21 days. But right now, envision your spirit being branded with, God, I'm going to arise and I'm going to shine and I'm going to give you the glory. I want Sarah to bless us right now. Come on. And that day when we turned to Isaiah 60, I had no idea, but Isaiah is the 23rd book of the Bible. Isaiah is also the first of the prophetic books. It ushers the scriptures into a season of the prophetic. It leads us to the minor prophets. I believe that 2023, we, the Lord spoke this last last week that we're going to step into a new level of the prophetic god has confirmed it over and over again are you ready are you excited so hungry for that and after the last service i just have to tell you this real quick and we're going to pray but afterwards so many people came to me with stories of god speaking the same specific word pastor irvin weeks ago he, he came to me after the service and, and shared this with me, and I could have ran laps around this place. But he said, a, a pastor from who knows where, he, he ministers all over the world, and the pastor called him and said, we, we really believe in the prophetic word in you, and we want to ask you for the sake of our church to intercede for us and give us a word for this year. And Pastor Irvin showed me what he sent, not making this up, arise and shine. Isaiah 60, verse 1. Come on, how crazy is that? I mean, that, that's pretty cool. And then Dr. Ray, she has a, she shared this with Pastor Urban. He shared with me. I looked for her for permission, but we'll just ask for forgiveness later. She won't mind. Um, she got a new Bible, and, and she opened it for the first time on December 23rd. And she just happens to open it to Isaiah 60. Over and over again. And I'm sure there's stories across this room, and I can't wait to hear every last one of them. God is shouting. That's right. And if he's promising, I'm going to be more clear, more evident, more tangible, more obvious. My manifestations are going to be undeniable. If that is the word of the year, then of course. The word of the year would be this loud and clear and undeniable. So I'm excited and I'm going to pray over you. What a moment. We love you guys so much. So proud of you. God, thank you for speaking to us so faithfully. Lord, so many of us have just hungered for a word from you. God, clear evidence of you again, a revival and renewal of our faith. Lord, I thank you that you're doing that for us. I thank you, Lord, where you have delayed, where you have postponed. God, I thank you that there is now fin finality to things in our lives this year where we are going to see you arise. You're going to settle accounts in our lives. God, you are going to move on our behalf. You're going to resurrect things in our lives. You're going to resurrect us, God. I thank you that you're going to gather the resources that we need to do your will this year from the north south east and west god even though we look around us and see clouds and thick darkness surrounding the people it's not so with us god we will look up and see the glory of god rising upon us so that we might arise and shine as you always intended god god i pray that this year you will be more real to us than ever before god Lord, that we would continue to cling to the prophetic word that springs from the pages of Scripture. God, I thank you, Lord, that we will crave the prophetic word that comes out from this house, from the house of God. And Lord, right now, we dedicate our lives to you. 
corporately, individually. Lord Jesus, we dedicate anew ourselves and our lives to you. Lord, we've walked in this place carrying some things from 2022, and we know that you are asking us to make a transaction this morning on this significant Sunday, Lord, where we lay some things to rest in your presence. And I pray right now in this moment, Lord, that you would help every single person lay to rest that which they need to lay to rest. God, if it's a broken heart, God, if it's sin in our lives, God, if it's an addiction that's been crippling us, God, if it's anger, Lord, God, if it's doubt, God, what is it? Lord, I think that every one of us already know by the work of your spirit in us what it is you're calling us to lay down. And I pray that as we walk away from this altar moment, we walk away lighter and free from those things. God, we leave it here at the altar. God, I pray also that you would fill us anew with your Holy Spirit. Because it's the Holy Spirit that causes us to arise and shine. It's the Holy Spirit that caused Jesus to be raised from the dead. And it's that same Spirit that you promised to live on the inside of us, to bring new life and resurrection to us every time we need it. And today we need it. And God, we ask right now that you would respond to every heart of faith, to every heart that hungers for more, that you would give them a fresh baptism and filling of the Holy Spirit, even now, God. Lord, I thank you that this word is for each and every one of us. God, you are calling, commanding, and promising. We will arise and we will shine. We will rise up from the ashes, rise up from despair, and not just arise, but shine the glory of God. Make a difference in the world around us and bring you glory. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said, amen. Keep your heads bowed this morning. Today is a brand new year and the Holy Spirit's pulling on some people's hearts to rededicate or to give their life to Jesus. The day of your salvation is today. You cannot wait. So if you want to give your life to Jesus, what better day than on this day, today, the day that God has given us. So if you want to give your life to Jesus, bow your heads. But I want everyone to pray this with me. But those of you that want to give Jesus your life, pray this prayer. I want you to mean it with everything in your spirit. Everybody repeat this prayer. Jesus, I believe in you. I believe you died on the cross and rose on the third day. Be the Lord and Savior of my life. Forgive me of my sins. Help me to arise and shine in your glory. Look at me and listen to me this morning. That's the greatest thing that you could ever do. Giving Jesus your life, but you got to tell somebody. You got to link arms with someone on your right and left. Make sure you get a connect card. Come talk to one of the leaders after. Go on our website. We have so many different ways for you to tell somebody. But it's a choice, right? It takes you choosing to get somebody. This is the last thing I'll say about a rise and shine. I just, it's in my spirit. But so many times we receive a word and this guy's is a word from God. But we can receive a word and say, well, that's for them, that's not for me. I'm not really the shiny kind of person and I'm not really wanting to do, no, let me tell you and look at me right now. This word is for you. This word's for every single one of you. Why? Because some of you are in the ashes of life and you feel desperate like nothing can happen it's time for you to arise in Jesus but then some of you say well I'm not the flashy type of person I don't really think that I should be shining no look at me and listen to me it's time for you to shine for Jesus Christ why because the light of Jesus you can't dim it if you have Jesus in you, you're going to shine everywhere you go. So you take this word. It's not for your neighbor. It's for you, friend. It's time for you to arise and shine. You say, well, that's a self-serving word. Absolutely not, my friend. No, 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 no. This is the greatest surrender word you could ever have. I want you to get ready to sing. 
I surrender all. Why? Because the only way that we can arise and shine is that we surrender to Almighty God. So right now, we're going to sing just a chorus of I surrender all because I want you to get the picture right now in your mind of you surrendering to the cross. I want you the picture of you surrendering everything to Almighty God, but then God picking you up. And with God, you're arising. And then a bright light, you begin shining because it's through the glory of Almighty God. I want you to lift your hand, bow your heads. Lift your hands, bow your heads. And I want us to sing this, and right now, as we surrender, this will cause you to arise more than you could ever imagine. Come on, lead us in I Surrender All. Come on, church, let's sing it. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender.